<laughs> what a way to wake up. So cool. Welcome aboard. After years cruising the North Pacific, we are embarking on a journey south to warmer waters. This is our story day by day as we explore Mexico's beautiful Baja coast. Come along and experience daily cruising life as we do. We came out to open the wing doors and found these fish on the side of the boat. I think they're eating on the hull. I think they are. I saw them towards the back, but now they're up here. They're working their way around the boat. Then the fishing village. Looks like the bikers we met yesterday are camped Ray's out. Ray's jumping over there. Yeah. Hear the bubbling? Yeah. God, they change color. Well, good morning. We had a wonderful, uh, calm night, overnight last night. Woke up, it was fairly calm. Now the wind has kicked up, 15, 17 knots here in the Anchorage, exactly as forecasted. So no surprise there. So we're going to hang out on the boat for a while. In the meantime, look what uh, Rosie made up for, for breakfast. Some fruit. Some fruit. Yeah, otherwise just uh, relax for a little while and... Enjoy the view. Well, as predicted, about 25 to 27 knots of wind here. There's a panga over by the reef with some snorkelers in the water. And then I wanted to see if I could show you past the headland out into the sea. There's our friends on Fern. If I can zoom in here enough that you can see what we can see there's out in the sea past the headlands I think we're happy to be right where we are so we are protected behind this big guy maybe not as much from the wind but from the seas which is all that matters Really enjoying our time on Sea Venture in this wind. 22.3 knots, the 10 minute average. I think we've seen 30, a gust of 30. But these are these uh, Nortes, N O R T E, uh, strong winds coming out of the north in the Sea of Cortez. I think mostly in January, February, and March time frame. Often can last for multiple days. And as I showed you earlier, uh, making the sea itself unmanageable as far as any kind of cruising boat, I think, really. So it looks like this one is uh, scheduled to last till tomorrow evening. So we're in a spot that we can enjoy the experience versus struggle with it. Okay, I kind of think the storms are kind of fun as long as we're safe. You know, there's 30 knots right there. How cool is that? Staying right in our anchor circle. Sea Venture's doing well. You know, these kind of winds. Uh, Remind me of a saying uh, that you've probably heard before that a pilot uh, friend of ours told us, you know. Uh, but the idea that you'd rather wish you were cruising and be anchored than 
cruising and wishing you were anchored. I think what pilots say, I wish I would, uh, I, w I would rather wish I was flying and be on the ground than be in the air wishing I was on the ground. Something like that. Same idea. But we have a lot to explore here once this wind dissipates. All right, I just happened to glance up here and this tender cover is only on with a couple of straps and wouldn't go anywhere, but it's certainly not doing anything. And it was flopping all around, so I'm working on tying it down a little bit more. It's howling up here. To give you a sense, I can't even see. those not so windy days. from inside now sitting uh, between 25 and 30 knots of wind this is like turtle bacon but not nearly the fetch so probably uh, not not nearly as rough but let's go up and take a look at that uh, anchor bridle and see how she's doing so you get to hear the wind here If you can see her in the sun, pulling. That's pulling very hard. We're going to lift that completely out of the water because we have enough scope. I know the chain should be inside. A couple of you have told me that before. But you can see now it goes down because the boat's actually in this amount of wind being pulled forward by the anchor. So it, it pulls forward, it gets real tight, it's like spring-loaded, then slides forward. Again, the boat's actually gone forward, which means you're definitely set well, you're not moving, and then it'll pull back up and it'll, it'll continue that process. But of course we have our anchor alarm on as well. So have you figured out yet when you have two cats on board, what activity do you do while cruising every single day? Yeah. Vacuum. Well, we decided to uh, do a little something with our windy day on the boat. So we have decided to work on this last bit of deck. This is this cockpit area is the last area on the boat uh, where we have removed the old teak and been working on finishing up uh, getting this all sanded down and getting some kiwi down so um, yeah I talked Jim into doing a little sanding this afternoon yeah so this deck needs uh, some more sanding and epoxying and sanding and epoxying and sanding and then uh, <laughs> all grip around the edge in the white like all the other white on the boat and then kiwi grip through the field it's a project we really want to have done by june so uh we'll just plug away at it slowly but surely but it's this real windy day so we're staying on the boat so we thought we should get started a little bit or at least rosie thought we should and it's actually a good idea so <laughs> here we are Let's get to it. Hey, so we're working away on this project. Sorry, the generator's running in the background. I had the vacuum and the sander going for a while, and I thought, you know, maybe I should start the generator since we were already at about 40% on the battery. So that thing's going. I'm going to try to um, maybe preemptively try to answer some questions that uh, people might have about removing of teak decks. So even though this is the very last of the Sea Venture 
uh, area that we removed teak decks. At one time, every deck on Sea Venture, upstairs, downstairs, forward, everywhere, was teak decks, which had all deteriorated over the years and were in pretty poor condition and in places leaked. So uh, we decided to remove all the teak decks. Uh, we, uh, the upper deck, if you've watched our uh, series on doing the retrofit, actually the Port Townsend Chipwrights Co-op did the big upper deck as part of their project, uh, but it's not inexpensive to have a yard do. Um, so we're tackling the rest ourselves, and, uh, and this is the very last of it. We have not made any videos about doing this at all, uh, because frankly it's not really in our skill set. And um, you know, it would be more like the Laurel and Hardy show than something I would want someone to like learn from. But if you want to learn about this kind of work uh, on a sailing channel, you can watch Onboard Lifestyle. Their, their catamaran, a family on a cat, happened to be in the Sea of Cortez. Anyway, he's got phenomenal skills and patience and um, an eye for detail beyond ours. But let me explain what you're actually looking at right here. So this had teak decks that were screwed down with hundreds and hundreds of holes. Those teak decks were torn up. The screws all individually, most of them, a lot of them broke off and stuff, had to be removed, brass screws. Then every little hole filled. Then uh, two layers of fiberglass cloth with resin was laid down. And then uh, after the fiberglass cloth was laid down, which added about a quarter inch in height to the deck, uh, then uh, it was gel coated. So what you're looking at right now, the dark brown uh, spots are the resin from the fiberglassing. And where, where these lines are is where fiberglass overlapped. The white is the gel coat, and the gel coat, since it's going to be painted, was really, I think, just put down because it's easier to sand than and, 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 and fills a lot compared to the fiberglass resin. And then the light tan is resin that we've added as we've worked to, to smooth the deck. So we're really actually close to the final stages here of sanding and then we're going to do some more filling uh, and then we'll be ready to uh, uh, primer the edges and all grip the edges and we'll talk about all grip paint when we when we do it and then kiwi grip the field the same gray as is around the rest of the boat and you just saw me recoating on the side decks uh, one thing i like about kiwi grip is that it's uh it's grippy it has a texture to it when you lay it down a specific way with a roller and as a result, it's kind of forgiving for less than perfect uh, fiberglass skill sets uh, like I have. So that's what we're doing. We're just working away on it. Now I think it's time for a break. We're just getting started. Rosie's going to make some fresh uh, flour tortillas. I think we're going to have uh, fish tacos for dinner. I'm going to keep her company. I'm going to stay out of the way by helping from the pilot house. Actually, in all fairness, I always give you stuff to chop, so. Yep, and I can do it up here. Or mix, or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. And then Rosie reminded me when I grabbed a beer and didn't put it in an ice cold mug, which we keep in the freezer, I just grabbed the can, that we have our extra tough cup holders from Alaska. If you don't know, extra tough boots are like the tennis shoes of Alaska. Everyone in Alaska has extra tufts. Yes, they do. Us included. Yes, we do. But, uh, yeah, so let's uh, do our, our dinner plan here. Fish fish tacos for the night. I should add that we're not, like, actually that good at cooks or anything like that. The so only reason we show it is that we're trying to show what it's like living on a boat. And hopefully what you're learning from the cooking stuff is that it's nothing special or nothing different than what you would do at home. Um... You know, for, for us, at least. So, um, yeah. Yeah, but what we did learn in Ensenada was that the fresh made tortillas are way better than that crap you buy at the store. Are way so. better. <laughs> and our wooden touristy tortilla press is just that and probably best for corn tortillas. So we'll use a roller, I think, now for the for flour today. tortillas. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. Well, sitting here in the pilot house with my beer, Rosie said I should go outside and film this. But my theory is that it's too windy, and if I go outside, you won't be able to hear me. 
so I'm staying inside. Uh, you can see there's a lot less white, cap, white caps between us and the shore. And the 10 minute average on the wind has dropped to 17.4. Feels darn right calm. And that, that's just doing exactly what the forecast was. I think it's supposed to stay about like this now until tomorrow afternoon. But much, much improved over the 30 knots earlier. Tortilla, tortilla dough is resting before getting rolled out. Rosie's working on the coleslaw, looking up the recipe. I don't remember. Yay, because we have Starlink. Yeah, exactly. I've got the little bit of fish uh, firing up for our fish tacos. Your coleslaw is going to be really good, isn't it? Of course it is. All right, well, I'm busy <laughs> dinging around doing nothing, cooking the fish. You're doing something. You're making the coleslaw. Here's your test, Rosie. What's in the coleslaw? Cabbage. Cabbage, carrots. And then a dressing, red cabbage. I just cut my... Okay. And thing. lemon juice? Because you just cut up a lemon. I'm working on a lemon, yeah. And what else? Mayo, sugar, lemon, vinegar, pepper, salt. I thought it was four things, so I forgot the salt and pepper. Okay. Six. Yeah. Did I pass? Yeah, apparently. I don't know the recipe. <laughs> Evidently. I just eat. And you're so good at it. Battered fish is done. Coleslaw All right, is... let's continue with the rosy cooking show. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Coleslaw. Is that everything? That's it. For the simple coleslaw we're making. We both really like the coleslaw on the fish tacos. I think because it's the crunchiness of it. Anyway. anyway. There you go. Rosie's working on the rolling out over here. I'm working on the cooking part. And we can just watch it. It only doesn't take very long. 45, 50 seconds on one side, 15 seconds on the second side, then putting them in here inside a pan with a lid so they stay steamy hot. We keep learning. This is like uh, yeah, edition number whatever. <laughs> but I think they're Look bubbling up like they're supposed to and all that. Are you supposed to pop the bubbles? I pop the big ones. <laughs> you Maybe you're not supposed to, but it's fun. You're gleefully popping the big ones, yeah. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Like 15 more seconds and that one's done. i got to work on the round technique. Yeah, how do you make them perfectly round? I don't know. I'm trying, but anyway. Oh, well. All right. Pull that off. And in it goes. We have successfully completed our uh, fish taco adventure. There's the fish and the slaw and show off the uh, tortillas. There you go, a big batch of tortillas. And uh, now it's time to wrap up this day and have some dinner. And of course the cat, because as soon as I sit down, this is what this is what Blake does. He just likes to visit. Yeah, he's a lap cat. He definitely is. All right, let's have dinner. <laughs>